this en- form of energy I'm talking about is an artificial leaf. Uh, it's coming out of EPFL, and basically what they've done is they've created a leaf on their own. So they created this leaf in the lab, and the reason they call it a leaf is because the way that leaves turn sunlight into glucose, you know, for their form of energy, they're mm-hmm. finding a way to turn sunlight into fuel that we can use to, you know, burn to for energy or, you know, use in manufacturing, and the fuel that they're creating is oxygen. But I kind of want to zoom out and say, why do we care about using sunlight to create fuel at all or to create energy at all? Please do. You know me. I am horrible at biology, and I depend on you for all my bio lessons. So go ahead. Basically, the premise is is as long as the sun is burning, right, Uh as long as we've got the sun in the sky, it's one of the most, you know, in human history, it's the one thing we can depend on is that the sun will come up. Um, as long as that sun's there, we have basically unlimited energy. Right. It's it's giving us so much energy to the earth, more than we ever could consume. So we need to find a way to capture that if we want to turn away from using fossil, fossil fuels. We want to find a new energy using the sun, so they call them solar fuels. Um, and so the traditional way we've done that so far is with photovoltaic cells. That, those are like the solar cells that you'll see solar panels on top of someone's house or out in a solar farm. Um those are great at turning sunlight into electricity, but their efficiency is only around 20%. Okay. So 80% of that energy from the sun is wasted somewhere in the process. Well, if you look at plants, the way that they conduct photosynthesis, which is how they turn sunlight into glucose, which is energy for themselves, they can do that at over 60% efficiency. So over three times better than these photovoltaic cells that we created and we use as humans photosynthesis that plants do is three times more efficient. So we're trying to find a way to replicate that in the lab by creating our own types of leaves. So if if plants are already naturally doing that and they're at 60% efficiency, why aren't we using plants? Well, so here's the thing. The solar fuel that plants make is mm-hmm. glucose. Um, that's sugar. So it's really great if you want to grow a bunch of plants and eat them. But what we're looking for is creating a solar fuel that we can use in manufacturing and in energy. And for us, that's oxygen. And when plants conduct photosynthesis, oxygen is only a byproduct. So it's only a small percent of the energy storage from the sun. Most of the energy from the sun is stored in that sugar that they make. So what we're trying to do is make a new type of leaf that is focused specifically on making oxygen. And the reason why is because we use oxygen in manufacturing. We add oxygen to certain types of fuels like jet fuel and rocket fuel. Um, you know, when you're creating steel, you need a ton of oxygen and it's also needed for medical purposes. So it's basically a way for us to alleviate some of our energy consumption from fossil fuels using the sun if we can create oxygen. So So, if I'm understanding you right, the secret sauce here, the approach is to kind of follow along the path that a plant takes to turn the sun's energy into glucose, but do it to turn it into oxygen. Exactly. So they, they they're using actually a lot of the same Uh, technology that is used to create a certain type of solar cells called organic solar cells um, using polymers. So they're using a lot of that same technology and a lot of those same materials, but instead of focusing on producing electricity, which has, as we know, some losses in efficiency, it drops Mm -hmm. down to around 20%. They're focused on specifically just turning that sunlight and water that they put into the system into oxygen. So that's all they care about is oxygen output because some of these sunlight energy is stored in that oxygen and can be released if you burn it or can be released if you use it for manufacturing. So all they're focusing on is the oxygen. And they were actually able to take this certain type of film called a bulk heterojunction blend, um, which is basically a blend of two different polymers that is used in solar cells uh, to create electricity, but they repurposed it to help produce oxygen. And it basically led to a huge improvement in efficiency, and it's much better than any other organic alternative we've had so far. Basically, we can say it's a huge first step towards using the sun to produce fuel for us um, instead of yanking it out of the ground. Wait, so you said you said it's more efficient. Do you have like numbers on how much more efficient it is? Yeah, so it's almost two orders of magnitude better than any previous organic devices. So that's like over a thousand, uh, over a hundred times better than any, um, you know, Interesting. previous organically based device. So it's, uh, you know, better than other things using the same technology, but one of the other markers that we want to measure it against is inorganic ones. Got um, it. you know, using certain types of heavy metal oxides or silicon, you know, these very heavily engineered metal alternatives, 
Um, it doesn't quite perform at those levels yet, but what they can say is using this uh, organic method, this bulk heterojunction blend, um, basically it's much cheaper and much, much easier to produce at scale. Um, so they can basically print it in an inkjet printer, just like the one in your house. They can print sheets and sheets and sheets of this stuff at relatively low cost. So they can make huge panels of this that can help turn water into oxygen fuel. Wow. And, and I know you said they're not using it for photovoltaic cells right now, but since they're making such advancements in this realm, could they kind of go back and be like, well, now that we figured it out, let's make flexible solar panels and put it on, I don't know, well, other applications? One of the uh, problems with these organic solar cells, and specifically this specific material that they're using, mm-hmm. is it's even lower efficiency at converting sunlight into electricity um, than it. the ones we use today. So they actually capped out at around 10% efficiency, um, and the industry standard now is around 20%. So basically what they've done is found a almost a reject in the organic solar cell community and turned it into something that we can use to replicate photosynthesis so um, they're getting closer and closer to that 60 percent efficiency that i talked about that plants can achieve and they think somewhere on the horizon if they get much better at this they can crack 80 percent efficiency so that means wow. the sunlight hitting this panel over 80 percent of that energy is captured in oxygen fuel that we can use for something else and you know they're more aesthetically pleasing like i, I might not want a photovoltaic panel in my house but if you can make some you know good looking leaves uh, I could be kind of more open to that. I'd get more yeah, oxygen around my surroundings. That'd be nice. They're thin and they're flexible and they're cheaper. It's a, it's an interesting way of replicating what nature has shown us. You know, you know the way more of, biomimicry. Yeah, yeah, more biomimicry, more nature inspired engineering. If the plants do it really well, let's try mimic what they're doing uh, to capture energy from the sun as well. Agreed. Agreed. 